Welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast, made for women who want their healthiest years to be ahead of them, not behind them. Join your host, Courtney Townley, right now as she breaks down the fairy tale health story you have been chasing all of your life into sensible action steps and lasting change. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast. This is your host, Courtney Townley. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here. We have rolled into a new month, which means we have a new theme for the Grace and Grit show. The theme for this month is going to be thriving through the holidays, (laughs) D-A-Z-E, because let's face it, this time of year often feels like a daze for a lot of women. Because we're often rolling into December already a little tired or a lot tired and a little underslept or a lot underslept. And then we're putting all of these expectations on ourselves to cook all these meals and buy all these gifts and make it a wonderful holiday for everyone around us. And that bodes really well for starting the new year completely sick and tired. And who wants that, right? So this entire month, my intention is to give you some really simple strategies for getting through the holidays with a lot more ease and grace and by golly, even joy. Because wouldn't that be awesome? Most importantly, I want you to be able to start the new year with two feet firmly rooted in the ground and ready for the 12 months ahead not dreading it, not feeling like you need some recovery before you start. I want you to feel ready for 2020. So today we're going to talk all about trimming the holiday fat. And I am not referring to the fat on your body, although some of the suggestions that I give you may help you to lose a little unnecessary fat if that is something that is a priority for you. But I'm really talking about trimming the fat in your life this time of year. There's often a disconnect between what we believe the holidays are about and how we actually go about living them. Isn't that true? We say that the holidays are all about love and peace and joy and gratitude and connection, but a lot of us aren't even making time for those things. Or if we do make time for those things, we're only showing up like maybe 25% to 50% of capacity in terms of who we are, right? We're not really showing up fully. We're showing up half awake because we are half awake if we're sacrificing sleep and we're not taking care of our, our needs. So rather than living the holidays in a way that we believe them to be, right, which is the love, the gratitude, all of those things, we end up living the holidays stressed and fatigued and overwhelmed and resentful and frustrated that we're having to do all these things. And and here's the truth. I do not in any way believe that we are meant to feel warm and fuzzy emotions all the time. I think it is hugely unrealistic to assume that the holidays are not going to present you with any challenges. That being said, I also believe that many, many women are creating a tremendous amount of unnecessary hardship for themselves by trying to jam way too much activity into a schedule that is already overflowing with activity. As someone listening to this podcast right now, just answer this question. Are you someone who has a ton of extra time on your hands rolling into the holiday season? A ton of extra energy to give? I'm going to take a wild guess that the answer is no. Most of us are rolling into the holiday season with already overstuffed schedules and already feeling a need for restoration. And then we're greeted in December, with this pressure to make the holidays perfect and special and memorable. And we throw ourselves into cooking and buying gifts and traveling and decorating and having parties and wrap going to parties, reassessing the year, right? Reassessing 2019 and planning for a new one. 
So the opportunity to take on a lot more activity this time of year is massive. And the problem is that when we draw giant circles of expectation for ourselves and we try to dump more activity onto an overflowing to-do list, we start sacrificing our sleep and we start sacrificing other anchors of self-care to reach those expectations. And then we wonder why we're feeling out of control around food and alcohol and we aren't really enjoying the holidays at all. And worse yet, we're rolling into the new year feeling terrible. When you sacrifice things like sleep and the other anchors of self-care that help you to conserve and produce energy, right? They help to nourish you. When you sacrifice those things, you really go on autopilot. And being on autopilot is basically being in a state of reactivity. That's what we do when we're tired, stressed, and overwhelmed. We react to life rather than respond to it. And most of us are not reacting in ways that are in alignment with where we want to go. So we react by lashing out. We react by eating sugar. We react by consuming alcohol, right? I don't know what your reactions are that aren't serving you, but I'm pretty sure you have a few. Maybe you have a lot. So December presents us with a really big opportunity to get very reactive if we're not careful. And then what I see a lot of women doing is feeling like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw caution to the wind this month and I will get myself back on track come January 1st. And I hate to break it to you, but that never really works. Because when you roll into the new year exhausted and sick, because a lot of people, it's no coincidence that people get sick in January and February. Right? And when you roll into the new year feeling exhausted and starting to get sick, you're desperate to feel better. And in our desperation, we reach for what I call those Hail Mary approaches the detoxes, the 21 day programs, right? The lose 30 pounds in 30 days. We don't really use our best judgment when we're feeling our worst. And I'm not going to go on a big tangent about why Hail Mary approaches suck because I feel like I've spent four years on this podcast talking about that. But here's the solution. It is possible to move through the holidays with a lot more ease and grace. And better yet, it is possible to start the new year feeling ready and feeling excited and feeling energized about what's ahead. But we need to trim some holiday fat in order to make that a reality. And again, that's my way of saying that we need to simplify holiday expectations. Energy is a limited resource. I know you know that, but it's worth repeating a thousand times. You only have so much energy to give in a day. And if you're feeding yourself well and you're taking a lot of adequate time for restoration, you can restore energy every single night. Right? And the next day, you can show up in a really powerful way again. But if you're not doing the things that restore your energy, you're basically trying to be productive with an empty gas tank. And protecting your energy isn't just about saying no to things that you don't want to do, but it's about saying no to some things that you do want to do. Right? It's saying no to some things that you do want to do because you recognize that energy is a limited resource and you recognize that you can't do it all. So how do we do this? How do we move through the holidays with more ease and grace and start the new year with both feet firmly rooted in the ground rather than in a face plant? Well, first and foremost, we need some clarity. We need to get some clarity about what the holidays really are about for you. What do you want the holidays to be about? And this requires asking yourself some really good questions. And if you're a longtime listener of the show, you know I love myself some good questions. So here are some questions I would encourage you to ask yourself. What do you want the holidays to be about? What do you want this time of year to be about for you? How do you want to feel as you travel through the next four weeks? 
More importantly, how do you want to feel on the other side of the next four weeks? And what needs to change in order to make that happen? Now, every year I spend time talking about redefining the holidays and ways to get through the holidays a little bit more gracefully. And last year, I did an entire episode on redefining the holidays. And that was episode 137. So you can always go back and listen to that if you want more resources for this clarity topic. But episode 137 all the way through 140 of last year was all about the holidays. So if you need a lot of support this time of year, you've got four more episodes to listen to. Now, one of the things I do with clients on a regular basis to help them decide where their energy is best spent is I help them to set up what I call a priority filter, or you could even call it a value filter, okay? Now, what that is, is it's just me asking a client, what are the most important things to you in your life right now? And I only allow them to list three to five things. Because I really want them to minimize, right, what their priorities are. I, I want them to only list three to five because when you start getting beyond five, I think your expectations are getting a little out of control. So I ask them what is most important to you in your life right now. And things I'll often hear are my career, my family, my husband, my faith, my passion or pursuit, whatever that might be. Maybe it's a sport. Maybe it's a, it's a hobby they have on the side. And once somebody gets clear on what the most important things are in their life, what areas are most important to them in their life, I ask them to order them with degree of importance. So of these three to five things, what is most important to you? And, you know, list it from three to five. That's a hard thing for people to do. I did that with a client recently who told me that her, the first thing that was most important to her was her career. At least that's what she said when I asked her what her priorities were. She said career, she said husband, and then she said her faith. And I said, okay, great. Let's list those in order of which one is most important and which one is least important. And they were in totally the opposite order of the way she first brought them up. So her career, which she mentioned first, was actually the least important to her. And her faith, which was the last thing that she mentioned, was the most important thing to her. And once you know what your values are, and you know the order of those values, you can start to use that as a filter for your decisions. So when you come up with, should I or shouldn't I do this or that, Number one, is it on your value list? If it's not, it's an easy no. And if it is on your value list, where does it fall on the value list? Is it more important than something else? Is it less important than something else? And through that process, you start to be able to make decisions a lot more easily based on understanding yourself better. So another little tool that I have for you that is also in line with this is choosing a holiday theme that acts as a filter, all right? So it might just be a word, right? So maybe it's love. Maybe you want this holiday to be about love for you. Maybe you want it to be about peace or joy or rest or family or presence as in your attention. But having a holiday theme or knowing your values through the holiday season can be an awesome filter for you to make decisions through. It helps you to trim the fat. The next thing I want to bring up with in terms of tips I have for you for moving through the holidays with more ease and grace is really giving yourself the grace to simplify, right? Which that priority filter will help you do because it helps you to get clear on what is most important to you. But I also believe a part of giving yourself grace to simplify is learning how to practice the art of constraint. And I know a lot of people listening, they don't like that word because constraint for some people is the opposite of freedom. At least that's how they perceive it. It means restriction, right? But all constraint really means is you're doing less of. You're not giving into every urge and every desire. 
And in essence, you're really parenting yourself. Because isn't that what we do as parents? We help our children to constrain themselves from giving in to every temptation. I know with my kid, if I let him eat whatever he wants for breakfast every day, right? He's not going to make himself an omelet. No, he would go to the store and buy donuts every day. And if I let him go to bed whenever he wanted to, he might not ever go to bed until he finally, you know, passes out from exhaustion. And if I let him buy whatever he wants, that would get us into a lot of trouble. So as parents, we see the benefit of constraining our children, right? And yet, when it comes to ourselves as adults, we think constraint is a horrible thing. But the truth is, constraint can be an incredibly beneficial thing to your well-being. And I know that we don't like this conversation, right? We want to be able to have whatever we want, whenever we want, and whatever quantity we want it in. But that leads to a lot of consequences that we don't want. So the holidays, again, present us with an opportunity to really lean in to the practice of constraint. And all I mean by that is giving yourself permission to less travel, right? And permission to go to a few less parties and buy less gifts. And consume less alcohol and flour and sugar. I mean, do you really have to cook a 12-course meal because you've done it for the past 15 years? All constraint is, is really giving yourself permission to do less, to consume less, to commit to less. And the truth is, by saying no to some things, you are saying yes to the things that I would bet this holiday is really about for you, which is the presence, your attention, peace, and joy. But in order to get more of those things, enjoy the holiday season more, we have to adult. We have to parent ourselves. We have to lean into the practice of constraint so we can continue to administer excellent self-care and not get into that reactivity mode. So what can you say no to this season, even though you may want to say yes? It's a powerful question. And it's a really mature question to ask yourself, right? So the final thing I want to discuss today is just knowing your anchors, right? I mentioned earlier that when we don't take great care of ourselves, We get really reactive. And everyone has anchors. They have things that they do in terms of their self-care that really help them to be less reactive. And I know for me, one of those things, and and this is one of the things for many of my clients, is sleep. When I'm not well slept, nothing goes well. I want to eat more. Specifically, I want to eat more things that don't serve my body. I want to drink more more coffee, more alcohol, more things that don't serve my body. (laughs) I don't want to exercise. I get super reactive, which does not bode well for my relationships. My immune system tanks. I put on weight a lot more easily. So just with that one anchor, I can prevent a lot of negative consequences. So for me, sleep is an anchor because it helps me in so many other areas. And come on, kids demonstrate this so well, right? When they're tired, I mean, they're, they're so unreasonable. And they lash out and they throw tantrums and they make really interesting choices. And we do exactly the same thing. I also know for me and for many of my clients, eating often, staying well-fed is an anchor. Because if I'm hungry, if my blood sugar is low... I get super tired. I get stressed out more easily. I can't really focus. And I know for me, my relationship with food and alcohol gets really sidetracked when I'm not well fed. So two of my anchors through the holiday season and honestly, through the entire year are sleep and eating and eating consistently, eating well, staying well fed. 
Because I have learned through much trial and error that by protecting my sleep and staying well-fed, I am a better human being. I'm a better problem solver. I am less reactive. I am more helpful. I am more present. I am in all ways a better human. So what are your anchors? What are the things that you are unwilling to negotiate or fiercely protect for the most part over the next four, four weeks? Or over the next, you know, for hopefully for the rest of your life, but really lean hard into those anchors over the next four weeks. And I guarantee your holidays will be so much more enjoyable for you and everyone around you. So let's just quickly recap here. Getting some clarity, how to trim the fat through the holidays, right? How to move through the holidays with more ease and grace. My top tips for you today were number one, get some clarity. Get some clarity about what you want the holidays to be about for you create a priority filter, or at least, at the very least, come up with a holiday theme that can act as a filter for all of your decisions and to help you to say no more easily. The second thing I talked about was the practice of constraint, which is simply giving yourself permission to do less, to consume less, to buy less. And finally, I talked about knowing your anchors. Because when you are well anchored, Because you are taking good care of yourself, you will travel through the holidays in such a more joyful and enjoyable way, and you will roll into the new year feeling so ready, and that is my hope for you. So I hope it was helpful. I hope I gave you some things to think about. I love hearing from you. You can always email me at Courtney at graceandgrit.com. I hope you have a wonderful week. And next week, we're going to talk all about food and alcohol and entertainment (laughs) because we tend to associate food and alcohol with entertainment. And that is a very relevant topic this time of year, which I know a lot of people struggle with. So I hope you will join me for that conversation. And before we go, I just want to remind you, if you are a frequent listener or if you're even a first-time listener and you really enjoyed the show today, it would be so helpful for you to head on over to iTunes and just quickly rate and review the show. It goes a long way in helping people to find the podcast and to help us get the podcast into more ears, which is definitely a mission of mine because I think this stuff is really important for just helping to rescue women from the sea of misinformation that is out there around how to take care of themselves. So if you believe in the message of this podcast, if you want to do something small to support it, I cannot tell you how important those reviews are. So please take the time to do that. I would immensely appreciate it. In the meantime, take great care of yourself and I hope to see you here again next week. Thank you for listening to the Grace and Grit podcast. It is time to mend the fabric of the female health story. And it starts with you taking radical responsibility for your own self-care. You are worth the effort. And with a little grace and grit, anything is possible. Anything is possible.